What's up everybody, Gary Simon here. So today I'm gonna to show you exactly how to take a button dropdown that we created in the previous tutorial from this week, which is linked in the description below, and how to make it a reality in the browser with HTML and CSS, no JavaScript. So just to show you what we're gonna be doing, here it is, uh, very simple. This is based on that Figma prototype that we created. And yeah, just uh, all based on hover, HTML, CSS, and all of that good stuff. So, as always, if you haven't yet, check out designcourse.com. Also, make sure to subscribe and leave a comment. All right, see you soon. Let's do this. Bye. Wait. Now, chances are, if you're watching this video, you probably want to be a better designer. And if that's the case, how much do you really want it? Because at designcourse.com, I've created a UI UX course that will help you go from designing layouts that I might rate a four or five up to eight and beyond. But more important than that, as a better designer, this means that you can land higher paying clients in jobs. This course includes over 16 hours of video, 40 interactive UI design tests, and even mentorship, where I personally take a look at your work that you submit, I review it, and many times I also revise it, providing you with great feedback to help you become a better designer. Now, for this video, I want you to use the coupon code UI2022, and that will give you 22% off at checkout. All right, everybody, what is up? So we're gonna get started here. Uh, yes, I have a floating head. I am wearing a green T-shirt. Sometimes that frustrates you, but I think it personally looks cool. Kind of like just has like an avatar approach, you know, with my neck. So let's let's not get too carried away here and too upset over it. <laughs> So here's the um, the Figma project uh, that we created a few days ago in that tutorial. And um, the only difference here pretty much is going to be um, for the version we create, it's just gonna show up on hover instead of on click. If you wanted to do on click, you would use JavaScript or some sort of weird checkbox hack as well if you wanted, didn't wanna use the, uh, JavaScript. But we're just gonna do on hover, everything's gonna be pure HTML and CSS. All right, so um, we're gonna be referring back to um, this here just to get the SVG, the little icons here, um, along with the colors and stuff like that. So let's get started. So um, I'm gonna minimize this. I already have a project open here in Visual Studio Code. I have, let me make this just a tad bit larger. Um, I have just a, a folder with an index.html and quick tip if you're using VS Code, exclamation point, enter gets you pretty much what I have. The only thing I added here is this line right here, just to link up the style sheet, all right? So that's in a folder called CSS, and I created a main.scss file, or a SAS file, and I've also, I'm, I'm watching it with the extension live SAS compiler. I, I haven't migrated that yet, so I need to do that. But anyhow, it still works. Um, so also I have the live server extension. It's also up and running as well. So if we go back to our files, right click, uh, open with live server, I already opened that up. So that's over here off to the side in this browser. So when I save, it's gonna automatically reload. We'll be able to see uh, exactly what we're doing. Okay, with that said, let's get started with the actual HTML. So I'm gonna create an overall container just to hold everything. And I, this is gonna be our only child element that's inside of the body element. And that'll allow us to use the, the grid to center things real quickly with a uh, horizontal and vertical. So let's also add a button wrapper. So this is also gonna just uh, be a single element that holds all of our button stuff, BTN wrapper. Now, by the way, I am using M abbreviations. So you, know, you, may, you may see me hit a period there, BTN wrapper, that just you know makes it quick and easy instead of having to type all the stuff out manually. I do have a crash course from a year or two ago about using Emmet abbreviations. There's a lot you can do with it. So additionally, um, now we're gonna focus on, think of this in two, two main parts. So if I refer back to our Figma document, really we have this button and then we have this little uh, kind of unordered list menu down here. So we're gonna focus on getting this button done first. So let's go ahead and type in button. So we're gonna use a button element, and then we have two elements inside of that. So the first element, I clicked on the wrong thing, um, is gonna be this little icon right here, and then the second thing is the text itself. Um, we're gonna use the flex, uh, the flex box to just quickly put those on left and right alignment. So um, we first wanna get this, this right here, so if you control, um, left click, you'll get into that, but you wanna make sure you select the actual area down here. So if, 
I bring this out, you can kind of see, you don't want to select the icon itself, you want to select the this part right here. Um, that's the actual area that you want to select. So if we right click this and we copy as SVG right there, and I'm not sure if it worked, I'm gonna make sure it actually copied it. All right, so now it says copied as SVG. We just go back in here and we paste that in, just like that. All right, so we'll have to do that a few more times for the other um, icons and such. Now after that, I'm just gonna wrap the additional actions text in a span element like this, and we'll just type in additional actions. Save it, and this is what our very ugly button so far looks like, all right? So without CSS, everything always looks just butt ugly. All right, so next up we're gonna have um, the menu that shows up underneath it, the white menu. And so we're going to give that a class of dropdown, all right? And then inside of there, we're gonna have just, we're just gonna use an unordered list for those three list items. So UL, LI, A, and it's gonna go nowhere right now. And we're gonna open that up and we're gonna have three of these list items. And Again, it's think of it as just two columns. You have an icon and then you have the actual text. So uh, we have this icon right here. And again, I'm not gonna show you how to do that. I already have reference code with all that CSS. Same thing, you select it with Control left click, select, make sure you select the whole parent, right click, copy as SVG, and we'll go back, paste it in, and we're ready to rock. And then we're just gonna put a span there as well, add, member. So do that same process for the next two elements. It's going to look pretty much the markups all the same except for, you know, the the anchor text and the actual SVG elements. So I'm going to copy and just paste those off uh, right here because I have reference code. So this one's delete member, this one's sync all members. So if we save it, this is what it should look like up here. Very, very ugly. All right, and that is it for the HTML. So now we're gonna switch gears and go to the actual CSS. So for the CSS, I just wanna get some basic rule sets. I'm not gonna spend time screwing around too much with describing this stuff. It's not pertinent to the tutorial, but we're using the background color from the Figma document. Dis display grid in place content center. That right there will center everything, that single div element that we have called container. Uh, horizontally and vertically. Also, height, uh, 100 viewport height, otherwise um, everything will be up at the top. A margin zero, thought family poppins already have that installed. If this is a real project, you're gonna to wanna to import that through uh, the import, or ideally you import it right here with Google Fonts in your head of your HTML. So we'll save that, and that's, what this, that's where this gets us so far, all right? Next up, let's focus on styling the button, the first part, right? So um, what you would do in this context, we get the, the first thing I usually specify is just the background color. So if we go over here, we select this, control left click, we see the fill right there. You take that, copy it, and we simply say background, put your little hash sign, and there we go. We got the color rocking over there. Um, next up, we're gonna beef up the size of the font, 1.3 rem units. All right, just a little bit bigger. As you can see, border radius is gonna be 0.3 M units. All right, that just rounds out the borders right there. We also have padding, because look at this, this padding sucks. Don't create buttons that look like that. You want nice padding all around, or white space on the inside. So we're gonna put one M unit at the top one point. Now, if I just do one M unit, by the way, it's going to apply it everywhere. But if you notice over here um, in the CS or, or the, the white space from this section compared to this area, it's uneven. There's more over here. So if you think about a, a, a clock, we have uh, four directions, really. We have top and then we have like you know 3 p.m., which would, would be right, bottom, and then left would be like nine. So we're gonna, we can specify each one of those. So 1.5 M units just to push out the right side to create more even white space. Um, and then we could do one M units and one M units. And there we go. Now it is much more evened up. Okay, next up is going to be, uh, right now notice how uh, this is down further from this icon right here. This is like down, those ugly red lines I create. 
All right, so what we do to fix that is display flex. All right, so now they're evened up much better. And then finally, we can also cursor pointer. And now our cursor actually changed to a pointer. And then also, we're gonna take our span element, which houses the additional actions type. And we could say margin left, like 0.3 M units, just to push it away a little bit further from the icon. All right. So that's it for that, almost. We, do, or we are gonna have a hover state color. So hover, we put and hover here. Of course, you wanna be able to do this with regular CSS, that's why we're using SAS. Um, so what we'll do is put background. Now, if, if you followed the original design in Figma tutorial from a couple days ago, we did have a hover state color. So if we go back there, we can grab that. And to do that, we just grab this one. It's a slightly lighter version of the same color, essentially. So we're gonna paste that in right there. And now if you hover over it, you can see it changes, just very subtle. All right, um, then we're also, we're gonna add another thing right here because I'll probably forget if I don't do it now. We're gonna take on, on drop down. we're gonna say display block. And what that'll do is, uh, if you recall, the drop down class houses the entire drop down menu underneath it. So when we hover over this button, we wanna say and hover, we target drop down as well, and we'll we'll choose that uh, display block because otherwise it's just hidden. All right, let's go ahead and style the actual drop down itself. So drop down, in here, we're going to specify background white. We're going to put border radius of 0.3 m units. We're going to keep consistent border radiuses, border radiuses because that's what the button is as well. You don't want to really want to mix and match your border radiuses too much. Um, we're going to do left uh, 0.1 m units. Now, before I get to that, let's just put position absolute. All right, so that's gonna throw things off just a little bit. Um, we're also going to put left 0.1 m units because it's off slightly. However, now notice how it did that. What we need to do in order to fix that, we have to take the parent container element, which is called, it's a class container. And we're gonna say display, no, I'm sorry it's going to be position relative. There we go, now it's back there, all right? So this is position absolute, but it's because of its parent container's position relative, when we do things like move it around with top left, right, bottom, it's it does that in relation to its parent container and not the overall container of the, uh, the website. So um, now what we'll do is continue on getting that thing styled up. So we're gonna do um, box sizing, well, before I do box sizing border box, I'll show you why we're gonna add that in a second. Um, so what we'll do is add a, a padding of 0.5 M units. All right, that just gives us white space all around. Um, just because this looks like crap with these little bullet points here from the unordered list, let's switch gears real quickly. Um, inside of dropdown, we're gonna reference our UL element. We're gonna put in list style type none, or you could just do list style none, same thing. And let's just give our margin zero. We're gonna, we're gonna reset the margin and padding of the unordered list element. There we go. Starting to get a little bit closer. So, all right, we have our padding there. Um, what we're also gonna do is specify a width of 100%. Now notice how it kind of kicks off too much to the side like this. So if you add box sizing border box, it will pretty much ignore, although it is off slightly, uh, but it will ignore the um, padding that we added when it calculates that in relation to the 100% width. All right, next up is we're going to, uh, we're gonna come back here and add a few more properties, but before we do that, we're going to style up these elements right here, the actual list items or the LI elements. So LI, um, Actually, yeah, we don't have any rule sets for the list item itself. So we're just gonna reference the LI, the links inside of them, because if you recall, it looks like this. We have a list item and then we have the A element. So in the A element, um, which is the actual link, we're gonna say display flex. That gets them evened up a little bit better. And then we're also gonna say a padding of uh, 0.8 M units. Now we're giving ourselves some more white space. Text decoration is gonna be none. And we're also gonna say color black for the type. Getting close. All right, 
Now, uh, our span element, which houses each of the add member, delete member, sync all members, etc., we're going to reference that as well. So we're going to say margin left, 0.3 m units. All right, so it's just pushing it over, and it's more in line now with this additional type uh, up here, the, the call that's established. Um, and then also, we're going to take a hover state and hover. So when somebody hovers over these links, we want to add a very subtle uh, background to it. So the background happens to be, and you can get this from um, the component uh, in Figma, happens to be this color. So look at that. Looks quite solid. And actually, that's about it right there for um, the actual design. So now, what about the interactivity um, and getting this to show up on hover? So what we'll do is first, we're going to take this drop down and we're gonna make it kind of come down slightly, kind of how we did in the Figma prototype. So to do that, we're gonna say transform, translate Y, which is on the vertical axis, negative one M unit. So now it's gonna be pushed up a bit. And then we're also gonna say uh, transition, transform. So we wanna create a animation from the this state right here where the uh, translate Y is a negative one M units pushed up and it will create a transition animation uh, when this property transform changes, which it will on hover. So uh, we're gonna say just 0.5 seconds. Then we're gonna say visibility is gonna be hidden. Now we don't see it anymore when we save it. And that is it. So now to get this to actually show up on hover, we're gonna go ahead and come down here to our container. And when the container is hovered over, we're gonna say drop down. We're gonna say display block, visibility, visible. And then finally transform, translate Y. We're gonna set it back to its default position. Hover over it and there we go. Ready to rock, we we're able to click any of these. Awesome, awesome stuff. All right, everybody, hopefully you enjoyed that. Now, if you did, make sure to check out designcourse.com if you haven't yet to learn UI, UX in an interactive setting. And also, make sure to subscribe here. I'll see you real soon and goodbye.